Alright, three and a half years ago, I was sitting in your spot, not knowing necessarily where I would be, not necessarily knowing that what college I would be going to, um, what career that I wanted to pursue. I was uncertain, and in many ways, I was kind of fearful. I was a little bit scared. And I'm here to tell you that that's all right. I'm here to tell you that, to be honest with you, it's okay to be uncertain. It's okay to be a little bit fearful. It's okay not to know necessarily what college or what career that you want to pursue. I'm going to open up this quote by saying, stating a quote. Mary Oliver once said, what are you doing with that crazy, precious life of yours? And that is a question that I ask you. What are you doing with that crazy, precious life of yours? What do you plan to do with that life of yours? And finally, where do you want to be and how many steps do you need to take to get there? In today's keynote, I have three objectives. The first one is to show you that to be honest with you, it is not about where you start, it is about where you want to be. The second is that, you know what, it's okay to fail. That's awesome. Because you learn a lot from it, and that you are going to succeed. And I see some people in the audience looking at me and saying I'm crazy for saying that. But it's true. And finally, that you just have to go and do it. That once you know what career, what dream that you want to pursue, go out and just go do it. And those are my three objectives for you today. I'm going to tell you that today, currently, that I am a student at the second best good school in the country, that currently I am a published author. Um, I currently co-manage three companies. And that's amazing. That's cool. But to be honest with you, at one point, I didn't have any of that. In fact, three and a half years ago, I was sitting in a similar place just like you. That not only was I worried about what college I wanted to attend, not only was I worried about how I was going to pay for that college, I was kicked out of my house as a senior in high school on February 10th, 2009. That, to be honest with you, the same bed that I woke up in the night before, I didn't wake up in that bed the next day. That I was an adult, not just legally, but, you know, I was in charge of paying for all my, all my living expenses, my food, um, my uh, mobile phone. It wasn't the best thing that ever happened. It actually kind of sucked, to be honest with you. And to be honest with you, you don't choose that situation. You don't choose to be kicked out. And you're scared. You're uncertain about where you're going to be because not only do you have to worry about the same issues that of where you're going to go to school and how you're going to pay for it, <laughs> but you're now sustaining your own living situation where you're now an adult that, you know what, if you don't choose to go to school and no one wakes you up in the morning, well, you're not getting your diploma if you keep on not going to school. That if you choose to hang out with your friends and go out the next day and you have to work that day and you don't want to go to work, well, you may not have a job. And you may not be living in that same house being able to pay your rent, being able to pay for your bills. And that is a situation, unfortunately, that I had to go through. I can tell you that I was uncertain, not because of only what college that I wanted to go to. I was uncertain because, to be honest with you, I couldn't see where I wanted to be in six months. That I didn't have a way to pay for college. That even though I got into George Mason University, I ended up going to Nova because it was a financial alternative. I can tell you that I was also angry. You don't wake up and say, this is the most amazing thing that happened to me. I just got kicked out of my house. No, you're angry, you're scared, and you're sad. And what I'm here to tell you that it is not about where you start. It is about where you want to be. That even though, yeah, I was kicked out of my house, that I chose that I wanted to be do something else, that instead of dwelling about the past, I wanted to define where I wanted to be. <coughs> that, to be honest with you, 
one of the best words that I ever received in that situation was from someone whom I consider a mother, Josephine Miles Warner. And you guys will all go through different adversities, different challenges in your life. And that's okay. They're going to be different than the ones I'm telling you today. I can't consolidate all the challenges that you're going through currently in a 45-minute speech. I'll be here for hours speaking, and you probably want to throw me out of the room afterwards. But the best words that I ever received from Josephine, and this is an interesting story. I remember week after week, I would complain to Josephine about my parents and what happened. And all of the things that my parents did. And she sat me down and she asked me a weird question. She asked me for a $100 bill. And I said, I don't have one. And she said, exactly. And I looked at her quizzically and I'm like, why are you asking me for a $100 bill? I don't randomly carry hundreds on me. <laughs> um, I only had a few dollars and a few coins. And she said to me that you cannot give something that you don't have. And that if someone is not happy with themselves, that they can't necessarily give that to someone else. And maybe my parents weren't happy with themselves. And that's cool. They can't necessarily give that happiness to their children. And that's fine. She also said that, to be honest with you, Josh, what happened two months ago, you know, that sucks. That's bad. And I'm sorry that happened. But when you wake up tomorrow, you define where you want to be. That you define your future. And that you can choose to let your, how your parents, what your parents did and being kicked out define you as a person. But that's not going to get you anywhere. That you should love your parents unconditionally. Because to be honest with you, you can choose how much what happened, how much of what happened really affects you. And that is the lesson I give you today. That you can't define, you can't define, you can't let you define, your past define you. That your future defines you. That, you know what, to be honest with you, three and a half years later, I am very, I can say that I love my parents unconditionally. That nothing they did necessarily affected me. And my lesson to you is that you are going to go for things that may not be good. You may not get into the college that you want to necessarily get into. You may not have the best grades to do something. You may not be able to get, you may not get that job. There's plenty of times in my career that I've applied to a lot of restaurant jobs and I've been rejected flat out. I learned a few wise lessons. For example, probably don't dress up in um, holy jeans when you go into an interview. Um, I've done that before. I'm here to tell you that you cannot let what happens, your failures, define you. That you have to keep pushing forward. That my challenge is unique to myself. And maybe some of you guys are going through similar things. Maybe some of you guys are going through challenges for your parents. And that's cool. I'm here to tell you that don't let that define you. That every day is the first day of the rest of your life. And that you can choose what you do tomorrow. And that nothing that happened yesterday can affect you as long as you don't let it affect you. That I wake up tomorrow and I don't say that, you know, my parents kicked me out. I say, you know what? I want to achieve my dreams. I need to go to school. I need to go to college. I need to get my education. And I will one day get a job. That I think forward and not through the past. And that is the first story that I tell you. That every one of you guys in this room have the ability to be anything you want to be. From attorneys, to doctors, to politicians, to biologists, researchers. That when you start and you enter this room, you entered as one person. I don't expect you within the next 45 minutes to come out and know what your dreams are, know what career you want to pursue, know where you want to be. But I expect when you come out of here, that you look forward. That I, don't, I want you to leave your past in this room. And I want you to embrace it as who you are and come out of this room knowing that you just have to go and do something and pursue whatever you want to do.
and I can't define what you want to do, that's in you. Again, I could spend hours talking about that because uh, we all have different dreams and different ambitions in our life. And I'm here to tell you that you have to move forward and don't let your past define you on that.